All righty, let's unbox this thing. Let's go. Jared, the cheese for the quest is to run less than three heroes, so start at a low thread and make stage three easier. That's really cool. I like that a lot, actually. That's really, really fun. Um, what was... So stage three... So you'd still get the orc, but you start with a super low threat. You could go like, you could run that strider card too, right? Because there's the card that's like, if you control less heroes, what am I thinking of? Cause there's there's the card that I want to tr I've I've wanted to try for a little bit, but I think you can only run like one, which maybe not work because you have the objective hero. Um, it probably isn't. Strider, attach to a hero while you control two or fewer heroes. Heroes did not exhaust to come into the quest. While you control five or fewer characters, it gets plus two. Okay, so it Strider would be pretty good, and that's if you run one hero. That could be kind of that could be interesting. That could be interesting. I'm trying to figure out who you would go with. Hmm. That's cool. I feel like that would be the quest to try out Strider. Alrighty. Uh the Muma Kill. We've got the Olifant on the front of this one. Excited. Excited. I don't actually, you know what? I don't know if I'm actually excited to fight any Oliphants. But let's go ahead and crack this bad boy open and see what we got. I keep, I have a ton of these empty boxes. I have them all in order behind me on in one of those shelves. Put Strider on the objective hero. Run Glorfindel with Light of Valinor. Two heroes that don't exhaust in a starting threat of five. <laughs> I kind of love it. And then you run... Yeah, you just run Mono Blue. You run a Song of, Tra or Song of Travel. Yeah. Give the objective ally plus one. Light of Valinor gives you card draw. Yeah, that's disgusting. And then if you control five or fewer characters... But you could, you could just like Voltron. Yeah, you could Voltron, uh, Glorfindel. You probably could run, um, the, the, what's the basic card that says you don't have to follow aspect? Um, Good Harvest. Good Harvest? Is that it? You could run that. And then also run, like, Boromir from Tactics to do some, like, defensive options. That's cool. That would be really cool. That would be really, really cool. Hmm. A good harvest. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. New cards! I love new cards. We've got, uh... Kahil? Pets on the Rocks! Thank you for the gifted sub! Thank you so very much. Uh, and congratulations for to uh, Kamalisk for the uh, for the sub. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you. Ally Bormir would be great with that low threat. Yeah, because they get uh, extra defense if the engaged enemy's threat is higher. So that'd be cool. That'd be fun. I kind of want to run the quest back and do that. I don't have time today, but like I think that'd be a lot of fun to try. Ah. Anyways, 10 threat. Let's focus 222. Two, two. You may use resources from this pool to pay for any Harad ally cards of any spear. Sphere. Discard a Harad ally from your hand to ready a Harad character in play. Limit once per phase. Cool. Okay, so it's kind of like a uh, Outlands. The Outlands guy 
which I am drawing a blank on their name right now, uh, where you can pay for the allies from any sphere. I see, I see something like with Elrond running this, maybe a Gandalf. I don't know. That's pretty cool. His armor looks sick. His armor looks really cool. I guess I also don't have a good grasp on what the Harad allies are right now. Speaking of Harad allies, though, we've got the Andoraf Guardsmen. Nope, this is not Harad. That's really funny, actually. Two cost, Dunedain Ranger, 1012 stat line. After you play him from your hand, choose a non unique enemy engaged with you. That enemy cannot attack you this round. That's cool. Dunedines are all about having those enemies engaged with you, and so if you can prevent them from attacking, that makes it a lot easier, a lot better. That's cool. Also, we love two-cost allies, because this can actually block two enemy attacks, because you stop the first attack, and then you can chump block with them. The, the fact that he has two health is also pretty nice from like a indirect damage standpoint. That's cool. I like it. We got a side quest. Prepare for battle. One cost, six threat. So this is actually a pretty costly side quest. Uh, while this quest is in the victor display, the first player draws an additional card during the resource phase. That's why. Okay, that's cool. This is in leadership. A lot of our card draw is in lore. And so having this in leadership is really interesting. Getting it there is kind of tough. Um... I, I like it though. I really like it. I think that's really interesting. This is the this is the first one. Um I probably should have run some some of these in the last game because I knew that there was a moment where we wanted to kind of stall out the quest. That that's that's cool. That's cool. We're gonna have to try that one. Getting an extra card draw, it seems insane. We have a five cost ally here now this is a harad so we can pay for it using our new hero five cost two of our three attack one three ranged meaning that we can attack other enemies engaged with other players after they are declared as an attacker deal one damage to a non-unique enemy in play is this our objective ally yeah look at that oh that's cool okay are we getting all the allies are we getting all the allies that we just uh, had that'd be really cool yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Okay, so after he's declared as an attacker, deal a damage to a non-unique enemy in play. I like that you can ping off those goblin snipers in the staging area. Five costs is a lot. Two willpower is really nice. Five costs is a lot though. We've got wait no longer. At the beginning of the quest phase, search the top five cards of the encounter deck for an enemy and put it into play engaged with you. Then reveal one less encounter card this phase to a minimum of zero. Shuffle the encounter deck. That's sick. That's a cool card. It's it's niche. Five costs is a lot, but you can just run them in your rings of deck rings of power deck and play <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true. Oh heck yeah. we we'll have to do the rings of power next game. We'll have to do the rings of power next game. This is really cool. I like this a lot. The beginning of the quest phase, we get to search and find an enemy, put it into play, engaged with you, so you don't have to put it into the staging area. You don't have to worry about the threat that it's going to progress. You know exactly what you are questing against because you're not going to, in true soul, you're not going to be revealing a card. You have something that's, you have the ability to uh, like get a enemy so you can turn on all your Dunedain stuff. Pets on the rocks. I used to do tabletop magic. Uh, that was that was like my high school job and hobby. So I did I did tabletop magic. That's that's why I flip cards. Um, this is really cool. I like wait no longer a lot, especially if you're running like a mono tactics where like sphere is, or like questing is going to be one of the harder things that you do. Being able to just like effectively negate and perfect a quest seems pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I like this card a lot. I like this card a lot. It's not going in every single one of my decks, but in the right decks, it's going to be amazing. We are going to get all the allies. Let's go. That's so cool. Okay. Uh, Jubayar, the five cost, one, two, three, three. This is actually in spirit. I was kind of expecting this guy to be the 
I don't know what I was expecting him to be. <laughs> uh, after he exhausted defending against attack, discard one face down shadow card from a non unique enemy. Yeah, okay, we're we're gonna run these harads in in our next uh, in our rings of power deck. We got a dwarf pipe. Hey, it's a pipe that's not a hobbit. Test your dwarf character. After a card is discarded from the top of your deck, exhaust this to place it on the bottom of your deck. That's big because the dwarfs are, have so many things about discarding cards off the top of your deck. That's cool. Monotactus is known for being bad at questing, but they eventually become one of the best early quests. <laughs> That's funny. Overcorrect. Overcorrect. I like dwarf fight. That's cool. Yeah. Got a five cost lore ally. Three willpower in lore. Let's go. Five cost, three, one, two, three. After she commits to a quest, look at the top card of the encounter deck. Then you may discard the looked at card. That is amazing for lore. I think, I think of, I mean, like, I think the tactics one is probably the least viable solo. These two are great, especially if you are leaning into the monosphere because they're good at doing things that the sphere is not, right? Good at defense, good at questing. Whereas this is the questing sphere, and this is not necessarily a defense sphere, but, like, you do have that. That's cool. That's really, really cool. Yeah. I think, I think in, like, in, in mono or bisphere decks, you're running these cards. If you're running, like, heavy side of one. Still not 100% sure about this in, like, a mono, but not, it's not awful. That's really cool. Nice. Coney in a trap. Uh, play only if you control a unique character with a ranger trait and another unique character with a warrior trait. After you engage an enemy, the enemy cannot attack you until the end of the round. Nice. Very, very solid for, uh, for Dunedain. Oh, we don't get the, we, oh no, we don't get the one that I played with. Wait, or is this? Where did I put my deck? Okay, yeah. So the character I chose, Khalil, is the the leadership hero. I'm hoping we get him as an ally. Cal yeah, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. So we did get all four of them. That's really cool. Um, this would be an insane ally, though. If we if we get an ally that passes out resources, that seems really good. That's cool. Oh, we got the uh, Khalil's head, headdress. Attached to him. It's restricted. Each Harad character gets plus one willpower. That's intense. That's cool. A refresh action. We can exhaust the headdress to shuffle the topmost Harad ally in your discard pile into your deck. Cool. Okay. So you can discard a Harad ally uh, to ready a Harad character. And then you can shuffle it back into your deck. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Okay. That's, that's awesome. I think it would be really fun to run this in like a... Aragorn of some sort with sword that was broken. So now all your allies, if you're running all um, Harad allies, are plus two. Faramir is the plus three willpower, and then you win the game. That seems awesome. I like the headdress. I'm not 100% sure why it's restricted. I typically, I guess he, there's a spear in the picture. I typically think of restricted items taking up a hand slot, but that's cool. Okay. This is, this is a really exciting pack. I don't know if there's any cards that are like, this goes in every single one of my deck, and I'm glad for that. I don't know if there's that many cards that we've opened recently, but each one of these cards fits a specific like deck and a specific play style, and all of them are cool. Actually, you know what? I think like here... I mean, like they're, they're all really cool cards. I think my least favorite is here, and I still really like her. Him. It's really cool. Maybe dwarf pipe, but dwarf pipe, dwarf pipe makes sense in the archetype that it's built into. These these allies are awesome. I really like the headdress. I think that's really cool. Um, oh, and the fact that you can ready these allies. The okay, that's that's where that gets really cool. Is you can run these allies.
Huh. Yeah. So you can run these allies and then discard allies to ready them. And so you can get multiple defends of like three and reducing the shadow cards. Multiple. Uh, you can't commit multiple times, but you can do multiple attacks, deal a lot of ping damage. Okay. I I think that's a cool archetype. I was not expecting there to be a, like a hurrah archetype starting to form, but like big allies that can ready and do things that the aspect or the sphere that they are associated with is not historically known to be good at is awesome. That's a really cool thing to do. Nice. Awesome. That's cool. Very cool. Next stream, we have a new Marvel Champions hero. That's right. Nightcrawler is coming to us on Friday. I have a stream scheduled at 10 a.m., Watch the community page, because if I can't get Nightcrawler in time and get home uh, quick enough, I may need to push that one back. But we are also doing another stream on Friday for uh, Nightcrawler in the evening. So we're doing one at 10 a.m. and then one at 7 p.m. Nightcrawler, let's go. I'm so pumped for Nightcrawler. I, I like... I'm getting so excited because he's just like feels exactly what I want to be my play style. And I'm really excited about the new like protection archetypes. And so Friday is going to be a Nightcrawler celebration. We're probably not going to do too many. Actually, we're probably not going to do any old hero new tricks. I'm thinking that we're probably just going to be playing Nightcrawler. And then next week we'll do some old hero new trick stuff. But I'm pumped. I look forward to seeing you all um, in just two short days for a new Marvel Champions hero. We'll play Lord of the Rings probably again next week. I'll post the schedule on the community page, YouTube, on Sunday. Appreciate you all. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. And see you around.